So this video in Tobacco University, I'm going to go over how to germinate cannabis seeds. What's the proper method? What are things, some do's, some don'ts here on Tobacco University. All right, let's get into the information here on how to best germinate your cannabis seeds. Well, keep in mind that seeds are dormant. So seeds are nature's way uh, for offspring to wait for ideal conditions to, uh, to take place before initiating the growth cycle. Cannabis seeds typically only have uh, about 9% moisture. Uh, typically, sun drying is, is practiced or as low as 5% or even less while dormant with minimal respiration. And the lower that moisture content, the longer uh, you're going to be able to germinate those or keep them stored and still have high germination numbers. So the germination process of a seed, there's a lot that goes on when a seed initiates the germination process. First off, absorption of water stimulates the germination process, that's the initiator to the event. The embryo will synthesize gibberellin, it's a plant hormone, in response to water uptake. There's a protein layer that synthesizes uh, amylase, which is an enzyme in response to the gibberellin. So sometimes people will add, you'll hear people adding gibberellic acid uh, for older seeds to help encourage the germination. In the sense they're trying to push that step along that would normally be initiated by the water and kind of cause this cascading event to occur. The amylase mobilizes energy reserves and um, hydrolysis starch to maltose, means it breaks it apart. Maltose is converted to glucose and respired to release ATP, which is the energy source. And that initial energy source, it's going to cause the kind of formation and pushing out of the radical or root. And then the shoot is going to grow up or in the upward direction to help you break through the soil to start to absorb uh, the sun there and produce its own sugars. So consistency is important when we're looking at germinating seeds. We want to be mindful of the conditions we have our plants growing in and try to keep them as consistent as possible. Once the environmental conditions um, ranges are determined, it's critical they're maintained for the duration of the germination process. That can always be exactly the same, but as long as we know the range, we're not exceeding or that above or below, that will help vastly increase your consistency and your percent germination. Uh, as always, you want to start with quality seeds. So this is the start for any chance that a good germination or emergence rate. Uh, getting seeds from a source that also provides a COA, Certificate of Authentic Authentic Authenticity, uh, can be well worth it. Um, that's important for um, knowing what seeds that you're getting. It could also stand for Certificate of Analysis as well. Keep in mind that while this image right here shows a nice uh, seed pack, this is not an official form of documentation. Uh, this over here, this kind of black and white, kind of seemingly like boring one, is uh, can be a more official form of documentation and any person you're purchasing or company you're purchasing seeds from should be able to supply with that upon request. Now the temperature, you're looking at what should you germinate your seeds and what temperature? Uh, above 90 degrees Fahrenheit or above 30 degrees Celsius will kill the seeds, will render them basically denature the proteins and basically kill them. So what's the ideal germination temperature? You're looking at generally that 78 degrees Fahrenheit to 82 degrees Fahrenheit, 25 to 28 degrees Celsius is a good starting point um, there that will allow for efficient or hopefully high germination rates. For the moisture level, you're looking at about a 90% relative humidity, uh, and that can be achieved in many ways through misters or humidity domes or even just plastic bags over little cups here for seedlings. Um, that's also very important here to maintain a very high relative humidity. Keep in mind, seeds also need it to breathe. So remember, they're respiring, they're taking in oxygen. So there should be some air pockets, no matter what substrate you're using, uh, to prevent seeds from drowning in water. We don't want them constantly soaking in water and basically drowning in water. We do want them to have at least 10% air to allow that respiration process to occur. Now, planting depth uh, can vary slightly. Typically, you're looking at an eighth to a quarter of an inch, which is about three millimeters to six millimeters deep. Many different ways to measure. The key is consistency and having a tool to speed up the process. Here it can be a little dowel with just a little marker on it to know exactly how far to place that seed down in the germination media that you're choosing to use. Now for light for um, seedlings, so it doesn't matter to say the light source, but we're looking at kind of uh, what's the intensity of that, it's the PAR reading. Typically 150 to 300 um, 
uh, micromoles is what's um, suggested. And remember, PPFD stands for photosynthetic photon flux density. PAR is typically what might be heard of in the literature, and that's photosynthetic active radiation. While not needed for the germination process, it's a good idea to have this light uh, source over the plants upon emergence, so seedlings can immediately start the photosynthetic process. You want to see that emerges and there's no light, and then they can start stretching and causing other issues. Keep the light diffused to avoid burning newly emerged seedlings, um, and then you can slowly work its way up, especially if you're going to an outdoor environment. Now, some growers recommend or talk about, well, should I be soaking my seeds? Should I take my seeds and kind of like put them in water for a duration of time? Well, for the most part, some growers will put seeds into water um, before that, you know, for a predetermined soak time. Others will go straight into planting them. A short soak, and when I say short, two to maybe four hours is a good idea, as this will help water infiltration and also allow the growers to cull out seeds that float that might not be fully developed. Floating seeds often have those air pockets in there and a poorly developed uh, endosperm, which will directly reduce germination or emergence rate. So sometimes it's a good idea to maybe soak them for a little bit to see which ones float, which ones have that kind of hollow appearance, and cull those out very early. Now, plain water or treated water, this is often the grow growers will ask, seeds should just be soaked in clean, just regular water. There's no need to add fertilizers, even if small amounts, there's no need um, to the soaking water. Some will may add kelp to help provide a small amount of hormones uh, if older or poorly stored seedlings, uh, seeds are being used. But again, even that necessary isn't necessary, just plain water is all the seeds need to initiate this process. Now, the summary of those cannabis seed uh, germination processes always start with quality seeds out of a COA. I give the temperature, the humidity, or moisture levels, I should say. The um, air should be about 10% air. The planting depth, the light, and water should be filtered or at least uh, drinkable uh, water there. Now, what I recommend you don't do or try to avoid is starting your seeds in paper towels to start the seeds for later transfer into whatever media. This is a poor idea due to the increased likelihood of damage to the fragile radical. It can get caught in the paper towel. You might miss them. Um, they're very small seeds. They're very fragile seeds. It's just something that is not advised. Maybe for germinating larger seeds potentially, but definitely for cannabis seeds, not really advised to start in paper towel, even though many growers do that. What I do recommend, as I'll show here in a short video clip, is kind of what you would see kind of at a large scale uh, tray system using Oasis. So let's take a look at that now. So here we're looking at a bowl of quality uh, cannabis seeds, or that nice dark coloration. You can see the area all set up. We see the trays, we see the, the Oasis, we see the dibble, we see a fan to keep the planter happy, and this is a great way to be efficient with this process. All right, as we saw there, kind of at the large scale, um, once you go through that process, well, how long will it take? Well, germination typically, you're looking at two to seven days. Emergence can be expected in about three to 10 days. Quality seeds in condition, con conditions in this uh, stated range will fall in the lower end of the expected range. So here's just an example of a collection of uh, seedlings here, 15 days from the initial seed soaking time. And this just, again, shows you what you can hopefully uh, expect to see in that three to 10 days. Now, where will you germinate your seeds? This is an important consideration. Uh, will you be using, you know, while general germination process is the same, what do you intend to place the seeds in when, and different uh, substrates will have different uh, specifics that you should be following. So for example, rock wool is favorable for seed germination, but disposal of that material can be an issue. Soilless media is easy to get, but can be very messy. Direct seedling is, requires no need for transplant, but needs specialized equipment, particularly if you're going into a field or soil-based area. So when looking at these options, when you're considering germinating seeds, which growing substrate would you select? No matter which one you select, search for that video on this channel and you'll find more details uh, for your selected growing media to help increase your odds of success with your cannabis seedlings.